Hello and welcome back to Van Adventures with Jodie. In this video I am going to be showing you how we made the ceiling in this van. It's quite different to what I had in mind initially. I wanted, you know, the cute little wood strips that run along front to back, but it was so expensive to do and it also looked like quite a big job. And so I tried to find something that was cheaper. In the end, I actually love what we decided to do. I think it fits really well with the rest of the look of the van, so no regrets. And it was pretty cheap and it wasn't too difficult. So let me just show you what the ceiling looks like now in the finished van. As you can see, it's really simple, it's really clean, and I think it keeps the van looking really open and spacious, which is really important in such a tiny space as this. When I filmed this, we were just trying to get on with stuff as quickly as we could. So I'll just run you through what we did and how we did it and what materials we've used. And you'll also see us finishing off the skylight, which we had to actually cut some of the trim off because it was so far to the back of the van that there wasn't space to actually fit the, the final piece on. So you'll see that fun too. I decided to put 50 mil insulation in the ceiling because I'm only five foot tall. I can afford to lose that little bit of head height that I would have gained from, from keeping it at 25 like most people do um, but it makes a massive massive difference in the summer to keep the heat from coming in and reflecting it back out and also in the winter you lose a lot through the ceiling. I do have a number of windows so I do lose quite a lot of heat out of them to be honest so everything in the ceiling um, I'm kind of so I guess I'm relying on even more. So the first thing that we did was to screw these wooden beams up onto the struts, the metal struts that come across the van. This gives us something to fix the wood into, but it also then extends that gap height to 50 mil ready for the insulation. At the same time, we also ran a structural length of wood from the front of the van all the way to the back along one side where we were planning to put the overhead cabinets. This gave us a really solid foundation to screw part of the overhead cabinets into so that we could do the ceiling with two sheets of ply lengthways across the van. This four foot from one side of the van to where the overhead cabinets begin. At the very back of the van, there isn't a strut for a while. So we had to improvise with having something we can fix the back of the board to at the very rear of the van. That's glued to the ceiling with an awful lot of no more nails, but it's also screwed horizontally into that beam for the overhead cabinets so it does have support in two directions. What I didn't think about with the 50 mil insulation is that I would also want the longer stick pins to put them into the ceiling. So I've got the standard ones and I'm struggling with them because they don't always quite come through. We managed for the most part and then I bought some longer ones as well. Once the insulation board was all up we stuffed any of the little holes with the recycled bottle insulation and then taped over everything to make it nice and vapor barriered. And I also needed to reduce the height of the max fan slightly um, because the frame was sitting higher than the insulation and obviously you wanted a fixing point around the edge for the ceiling to go onto. And then we were ready to start on the ply board. So I've used two sheets of 5 mil ply for the ceiling and that doesn't count the section behind the overhead cabinets. We did that as a separate piece so that we'd have as few joins as possible. And there's actually just one join in this whole ceiling we planned the location for the lights and drilled the holes for those and we also cut a hole for the max fan and the skylight which we could then kind of reach in hand and draw a, a perfect shape around and a couple of the corners just needed to be trimmed down to size and shape as well. I marked the holes for the lights on the insulation and then cut out little cavities so that there was space for the lights to recess and the wiring inside. Mum did most of the painting of the boards before they went up because obviously it's the right pain to try and paint upside down. I think she did everything but the last coat before they went up. We don't have any fancy beams that will like prop these up to the ceiling and hold it in place for us. So we just have to sort of chat tactics and improvise. We did have four people and two brooms so we did what we could with three people holding it up in place and one person, normally me, running around with the drill, making all the holes and pulling in a few screws to hold it up provisionally whilst we put the rest of the holes in. So that we knew where the beams were, I marked on the walls and then ran some masking tape from one side to the other so I knew exactly what line to follow for my screw holes. So they were all in a nice straight line. The piece of plate at the back is a bit trickier because we had to get around the skylight 
which requires the frame to be kind of sandwiched in between the skylight and the ceiling. So we hadn't put this in earlier like we had with the Max fan. Even though this skylight was from the same company as the fan, I think it's Max Air, it just was a different technique to install, so we had to kind of work around that a bit. The whole way the skylight is fitted, it kind of squeezes these different layers together. So we partly installed this originally, and then we had to unscrew the bottom part, put the frame and the ceiling up, and then screw it back down again. So it was just a bit fiddly, but we just took our time and made sure we got it all lined up perfectly. And then once we'd got everything screwed in place, Dad went then around, taking all the screws out one by one, doing a countersink hole in them and putting the screw back in. Obviously we didn't do this initially for speed, but eventually we knew that we wanted to fill the holes in with filler so that we can try and create a nice smooth, flawless finish at the end. I don't know if the camera can see it, but there is a join along here um, which mum has done a very good job of filling up so she's filled up the join and filled up all the screw holes there's a couple either side of this and there's a few in other places which I can't even find now um, and yeah we've finished off the edge with a moulding piece which has then been just sort of filled in and painted as well and that goes all the way around the edge with fork head too and then the cabinets went up, so we finished it around there as well. So if you saw the video where we put in the skylight, you'll see that we put it so far to the back of the van because I needed space for the solar panels to go that on the inside, there's barely like no room at all between that and the beam along the back. So in order to fit the final sort of piece on we're gonna to have to chop the edge off and we just thought this is going to go horribly wrong let's not do it until we absolutely have to and uh, that time eventually came we were really nervous about cutting this because if we broke it or like cracked it or snapped it or whatever you can't buy this part separately it's 300 quid for a new skylight I didn't want to be having to do that so we really put this off and we were really nervous doing it, but we kind of realized that we just had to bite the bullet and get on with it. And the good news is dad has successfully trimmed the edge off of here using a brand new fine saw. It wasn't as awful as we thought it would be. It's gone quite smoothly. We've given that a little sand down so it's nice and smooth. And now we can see if we cut it the right size. If you measured it right. <laughs> if we measured it right. So when the skylight actually arrived, for some reason in the box, it had the two parts clipped together, which is the last thing that you do when you install it. And they are like a one-way clip. They are not designed to come apart again. So I don't know why they came in our box together, but me and dad spent a good hour really delicately trying to prise these open and we, we managed to do that without breaking it but we knew that when it came to the install it had to go in once and I knew that if we'd started clipping it in at one side and then learnt that the other side was not trimmed correctly we'd be in trouble but it was all fine and I was really happy to finally have this up with the bug screen and the blind it looked really great and I was so relieved at how easy the trimming went of that part in the end we put this flange up now that covers the frame for the skylight that fits up the ceiling with this edge trimmed here and it fits like a dream so that was a uh, very lucky that it worked as well as it did i don't think i took any footage of us doing the wiring for the ceiling but basically we'd already run all the wires earlier on when we were doing the walls so it's just a case of running a route for them inside the insulation and then having them pop out. A few more months passed before I did all of the electrics. So once I had the battery in and all the system installed and some power, then we finally have a finished ceiling. It's been a couple months since we did the ceiling, but now the electrics are in, so I can show you my lights. Yes. Um, I did spend a bit more money getting dimmable ones because I wanted to be able to just control 
So I can have a whole range of different um, brightnesses. These are really good actually, really good quality. There's no flickering at all. It's a really nice connection. Um, really happy with them. You do need to also buy the dimmable switch, which has a satisfying clip. I actually got these off of Amazon, so I'll put a link in the description so you can see where they are. So in the end, I'm just really, really happy with how it turned out. Like I said earlier, it's just so bright and open, and I think that makes a really big difference to how the band feels. I think if I had gone with that wood strip, I would have been tempted to make it a bit darker, and it just wouldn't have had the same brightness the way that it does now. So yeah, really happy with it. So the cost of this was just for two sheets of 5mm ply and the paint. And that's basically it. So significantly cheaper than the other option too. So that's me done for today. The next video I'm gonna show you is probably gonna be the overhead cabinets and the bulkhead um, as well, which was quite a lot of work. So I'll show you how we did those ones next. And at some point I need to do a full tour of this van because I haven't yet. And there's so much to show you. Um, I've been living in it now for about six months and I love it. It's everything I hoped it would be. Actually, it's better than I hoped it would be. Um, but now we're entering the colder season, so we'll see what new challenges that brings up, which I will start blogging to show you because I haven't been showing up for this channel and I know a lot of people have been waiting on updates. So please leave a comment. It actually really helps spur me on to like get these edited and out. And yeah, like and subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I'll catch you next time.